So we are day three in the afternoon, Mobile World Congress 2025, and I'm completely exhausted, uh, except I have the opportunity to discuss with you, Leonard. So, uh, so great to have you. Good to have you. Uh, good to have you. Good to be here. Yeah. Are you going to interview me or am uh, I going to interview I mean, you? We're just going to have a chat. We're going to have a chat. Yeah. But the chat is actually going to be about what we experienced now over a couple of days here. So to me, it's very much about the energy, yeah. the growth opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's not so much about new technology this time. It's about down to earth, perhaps business, business models. In some cases, also about leveraging the things that we've had, at least in the leading customers, the leading operator network for some time. And then I think we should touch upon the network APIs and the Aduna venture. Sure. But sure. first, I, you know, here's the thing. I think it's about getting back to basics and then tuning into what it is that 5G is about, yeah. right? And uh, in fact, I talked to several carriers on the floor they were talking about 5G finally again. Actually, it's been absent in conversation for quite now some time. And now, yeah, I think there's now an interest in a critical technology that I think has been detrimentally uh, disregarded. And I think that's you. very, yeah. And um, a lot of that has to do with, you know, initial maybe exaggerated promises or untimely promises. Mm -hmm. And then now we're in a situation where we have all this technology that's just piling up behind a thing called 5G SA. Yeah. And um, we're also in a different time, right? I mean, we have a lot more handsets out there Very true. that are 5G capable. We didn't have that before. And so this is a whole new opportunity frontier for operators to revisit the 5G opportunity and then really reevaluate, well, what does it mean for us to invest in exactly making the 5G? Exactly. And I think there's a lot of reevaluation going on here. So one thing is that some operators in the lead markets, lead investments, they are really benefiting from 5G in the consumer space. There's no doubt it's a success actually in, in those leading markets. But if you go to other cases, enterprises is coming online now, homes like fixed wireless access, yeah. it's a booming business, it's growing as a fastest right. access technology, yeah, it's yeah. great. And you see it in the mission critical public safety, you see it even in defense. Now is really the time to see that 5G with standalone capability is that vehicle to create new business growth. Yeah. So I think that's really what we try to show here and you'll be the judge of it. But uh, switching to the topic of network APIs and okay. if this programmability yeah. is going to be used by anyone outside of our industry, we have to simplify, we have to make it available. We have to make it clear that a number of development platforms, Ericsson's bonus platform, but also other development platforms, they are able to create services basically everywhere in the world right. and independent of which operator the user is using for the moment. Absolutely. And that's really where the Aduna enterprise or the Aduna venture comes in. So yeah. what's your take? How, how are we doing on that? Can Gathering I you, speed? Can I tell you that you missed out on something? An important part? Oh yeah, it's called trust. And I think that's one what's essential uh, because you know, if you think about it, you're, you're basically channeling um, network, uh, exposed network capabilities from a whole wide range of operators who might be you know, operating in different markets under different regulatory regimes. Absolutely. And how do you foster trust? And that's a very expensive exercise. It's not a static thing, right? It's always changing, especially these days. And so how do you orchestrate and manage that, ensure that consent and uh, regulatory policies, security policies, trust policies are instituted so that the developer doesn't have to think about any of that stuff. And then when it gets up, uh, exposed up to the development platform layer, as you described, how do you, how do you take the risk out of that because if you don't have trust, there's no liquidity, which is where I think Aduna functions as this exchange, right? A lot of people like to say, ah, it's an aggregator, but it separates the marketplace from the function of being a platform, right? An exchange platform that basically settles and clears these APIs transaction, but then also foundationally applies that, that quality of trust, which I think, I mean, I think that's going to be a challenging thing for the Aduna team, but it's going to be something that's extremely valuable for the entire industry at a global level. Yeah, it's a great observation. And I think as we see, there's more operators coming on board. So Aduna is growing when it comes to the operator network side. But also to your point about 
how can these developers be assured at least to some level that these services will be available. So it's trust in terms of availability as well. And these are real-time services, many of them, so it yeah. better be there when you need it. It can't be available sometimes later. So sure. there's a lot of transactions, but there's also a lot of trust that you need to have in the platform. Well, that's actually a great uh, segue into sort of what's next there. Here we are showing a lot of partnerships. I think we can scale them around the world. Mm -hmm. These are early customers that have commercial traction now, many of them using network capabilities over network APIs, some of them being more in the network slice capabilities, some of them being more in terms of advanced positioning or other services. Yeah. What's your take on the next step here? What should we, f we be focusing on? Uh, focus on the valuable, simple stuff, hmm. right? Like what the banks are asking for, the financial services, fraud Why prevention, not? transactions, yeah. Why not? Why do you have to make it complicated? But those are available, as you know. So th these are things that are ready to scale. But, but those, are, those are the things that are going to hydrate the economics of all of them. I think that's a great start, actually. Right, yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, once you have more participating operators coming in with more of the 5G SA, like uh, more advanced 5, or let's call it just true, you know, I don't want to call it true 5G, but yeah, real 5G the capabilities and features, then it's just going to... Yeah. Uh, raise the then that time. demand is there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and you know, it's not hypothetical. It is, I mean, right now we have a serious backlog. Look at what three three GPP. We're on like what release eighteen, and then now during uh, going into the nineteen cycle. Think about all those features that uh, you know, a lot of operators can't capitalize on, and you know, uh, consumers as well as enterprises can't leverage. And so, this huge opportunity, and it's reality. It's it's not hypothetical. Oh. Yeah. Great, and uh, thanks for the uh, view on the industry, Leonard. I think, yeah, as you pointed out, this is perhaps the biggest untapped potential for our customers, for enterprises, for governments, for countries, because if you combine this with a strong AI proposition, a strong sovereign cloud proposition, that advanced connectivity with 5G SA is actually doing wonders when it comes to digitalizations across industries and, and countries. So yeah. big thanks for, for your reflections Please. and thanks for the partnership.